Hello everyone, Mike Hoffman here with another video tutorial brought to you by TipSquirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. For all kinds of Photoshop and Lightroom goodness, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or Facebook.com slash TipSquirrel. Today we're going to explore 3D extruded text within Photoshop CS6. And you'll recall from earlier tutorials, perhaps, that the 3D feature within Photoshop CS6 is for Photoshop Extended only. So you must have Photoshop CS6 Extended to do this project. Now we're going to start with some text, and we're going to extrude this text by stretching it out and making a 3D object out of it. And then we're going to split that extrusion apart into its constituent pieces and we're going to play around with each chunk of it separately. So we're going to build our 3D object up, we're going to split it apart. And we'll start by selecting this text layer in the Layers panel. And then we'll go to the Type menu and we'll choose Extrude to 3D. Now at this point you should see the type looking more 3D. You can see the extrusion. It's receding now into the background. And in fact, if you select the Move tool, up here in the 3D modes of the toolbar for the Move tool, you can choose any one of these. In this case, rotate the 3D object. And we can move this extrusion around, and we can see it from different directions. I'm going to hit Command-Z or Control-Z to undo that because we want to leave that in its default position. Now, if Photoshop didn't ask you to do this, you can choose the 3D workspace. And I recommend this because this will put the 3D panel and the Properties panel together on the side. And you'll need both of these to work through this project. And in general, most of your 3D projects will require both of these panels. Now, the first thing we're going to do is adjust our lighting. So we'll look at the bottom of the 3D panel and we'll click on infinite light and we can see it here and an infinite light simply has direction. It comes from everywhere and its source is far away. Now we can drag on it and you can see as I'm dragging we're getting shadows and you can see this object up here is the actual representation of the source of the light. So we're going to drag this around until we get a shadow coming off to the left side of our text, and that's pretty good right there. And we'll leave that as is. Now we'll switch back to the current view. And again, we can move this around at will. I'm going to hit Command-Z or Control-Z to undo that. Now the next thing we want to do is set some more interesting material for these objects. And recall that a 3D extrusion has several faces, all of which can be controlled independently. That is, you can set the material of each face independently. We have a front face, which is known as the front inflation material. And we have a back face as well, which is behind the text, called the back inflation material. Then you have the extrusion, which is the part on the sides. And then you additionally have bevels along the front and back edges. What we can do is go here into 3D panel and we can select any one of these materials or we can shift click to select them all. And once they're selected, we want to look up here into the properties panel and notice that materials is chosen for us because we've highlighted materials in the 3D panel. Now we can drop down this arrow to choose the 3D materials picker. And here we see the default materials that ship with Photoshop. Now we want to use some additional materials that we can download separately. And if you haven't already done this, you can download them by going to the 3D menu and choosing Get More Content. And this will take you to a Photoshop.com website where you can download additional materials. Once you do and you've installed them, when you click on this gear, you get an entire list of different materials available here that have already been pre-set up for you. In this case, we're going to choose the stone materials. And we'll click through and we'll just replace the current materials with the stone. And then what we want to do is choose this dark red material here. 
the gemstone garnet. We click on that and we can see right away it's been applied to our 3D text. Now just to see what this looks like, we can do a quick render. And we can do that by pressing Command Option Shift R or on Windows Control Alt Shift R. And we get a quick render. And I'll hit Escape to quit out of that. And keep in mind that you can at any time click on one of the other layers and you can see your 3D object without all the extra helper information on the screen. And there's a good look at it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to that 3D object and now we're going to break the text apart into separate pieces. And the way that we do that is by highlighting the text, in this case retro, in our 3D panel. And with the entire text selected, we're going to go up to the 3D menu and we're going to choose Split Extrusion. We'll click through this warning, and now we've got separate objects. Each letter is its own object. If we come here to this retro object in the 3D panel and open it up, we can see there's now a separate R, E, T, R, and O. So we can choose any one of these and work on them independently. So you can see here we've got just the R selected. And with just the R selected, Again, with the Move tool active and the Rotate 3D object chosen, we can click and we can move just this R. So we can set it off to the side like that, away from the rest of the text. We can click on the E and you can see that chooses it here in the 3D panel automatically. And with that chosen, we can rotate it around. We'll click the T and swing that one around as well, maybe tilt it up. Now this R, we'll tilt it over this way, and the O, and we'll tilt it in. And now we've arranged all of our text letters independently of each other. We can go back to the 3D panel here and select Current View, and then once again with Command Option Shift R or Control Alt Shift R, we can do a quick render. Now, quick is a relative term when it comes to rendering, and the render speed will depend a great deal on the power of your own system. Now, once we've got this set up, we may decide maybe we want to make some further changes. So we can choose the R, and let's choose the materials for the R. And again, I'm clicking the first material and shift-clicking the last material, and we'll go up here to the materials picker and choose the blue material the gemstone sapphire. We'll do the same. We'll click on the T. We'll come down here in the 3D panel and choose the materials that make up the T. And we'll change that to the blue as well. Finally, we'll come down to the O and we'll choose the materials for the O and change them. And now with them all three changed, we can simply go back to the current view, make any adjustments that we want, and Command Option Shift R or Control Alt Shift R to do a render again. Once it renders, again, we can click on any other layer outside of the 3D layer to remove the ground plane and the rest of the 3D helper objects, and we can see our finished composition. So there you have a quick way to build up 3D text using extrusions, to rip the 3D extrusions apart into their separate constituent letters, and to adjust the letters independently, including the location and the materials. It's really easy to do within Adobe Photoshop CS6 Extended. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com you'll find a variety of photography, Photoshop tutorials, and related information there. Or you can follow me at mhoffman2001 on Twitter. And you can always find me on Google Plus by simply going to gpluSmikeHoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial here today on TipSquirrel.